<laughs> All right, welcome back. Unfortunately, changing your mindset is not as easy as changing your clothes because let's face it, the main thing that is standing in the way of our goals is ourselves. So we've invited life and relationship coach Colleen Diedrich to help us break down our goals and get on the road to achieving them. I wish you were part of our girl talk, you see, because <laughs> as I was explaining to Dalia, I am not a relationship coach, so some of these relationship goals for 2022 was a thing for me. But anyway, we're not here to talk about relationships. We're here to talk about changing our mindset. Now, we've been hearing about this for eons, mm -hmm. changing our mindset, but it's, it is so difficult for people to do because we're so burdened mm -hmm. by our problems in life. Yes. 2022, this is the year. Mm -hmm. We're going to change our mindset. Let's help our viewers. How do we start? How do we press the reset button? What is the first thing that we need to do? Well, okay, so the first thing we need to do is the year in review. Yeah. Yes, do an analysis and from that analysis, you ascertain where are or where were your pain points in 2021? What are the pressing things? And then from there you determine, okay, okay, what, what do I wanna to do to address the situation, yeah? Some of us, the issues were physical, our health, and we know what happened with pandemic and all of this stuff. Outside of that, it's emotional for some persons, right? So they've gotten to a place where they have to do the purge. Pandemic might have also um, prompted this whole introspection. You're starting to look at life as persons close to us. We're losing persons close to us. And you start to say to yourself, well, I'm not happy. You know what I mean? So the first thing is to start to break down what is happy for you. But we're because, told that mm -hmm. you must never look back. Sorry? Who said that? We are told that we must never look back, no. look forward. No, 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 no. Okay, so in order for you to move forward powerfully, there must be an assessment as to where it is that you're coming from, yeah? So every chance you get, do a little review, do the checkup from the neck up to determine, okay, what do I need to do to make sure that I'm harnessing everything that's available to me as I move forward. So that's the first thing that I would say to everybody. Sit back, do the year in review, make the analysis, write things down, and then determine, okay, what do I want to prioritize? Emotionally, is there anything that I want to fix? Physically, most of us are preoccupied with the extra pounds that we would have put on as a result of working from home, right? What am I going to do about the way? Because we're complaining, but Action is the only thing that's going to cause us to get the results that we're looking for, right? And I'm happy that you mentioned that word, mm -hmm. action. Action. So sometimes we put it on paper, but we do not act. Mm -hmm. We just expect everything to happen, you know, like a miracle. No. Talk, talk to us about the importance of action, mm. making things happen. Okay, so that action without a goal is pointless, right? So once you have done the review, then it's time for you to put down, okay, what exactly do I want to see? What do I want to see happen? From there, what help do I need? Because a lot of us, this whole idea of actually moving from point A to point B can be daunting, depending on what it is. We might be frightened, the idea of losing weight, however much weight we want to lose might be a tad bit much, yeah? Um, if it is that we want to work on something that's happening to us emotionally, we definitely need to get somebody in there to facilitate that process for us. So we set the goal. We want to put some timelines on the goal. I want to see this happen by this time. I'm going to reach out to so-and-so to ensure that I have the necessary assistance to make it happen. Outside of that, you want to get somebody now as an accountability partner to make sure that they're in your back, right? So you can see this thing through to fruition. Mm -hmm. I'm happy that you also <laughs> mentioned timelines yes. because as you know, we start with a bang in January mm -hmm. and then along the way, Back to rock bottom. Flat, flat, flat. How do we recover? How do you suggest we recover from that? Mm. You know, because some of us are in denial, you know, mm -hmm. um, and it makes it a little difficult for us to get back up. But how do you suggest that, you know, at that, you know, we're human. Mm -hmm. So there will be moments that, you know, we just can't bother. Mm -hmm. How do we, you know, just come out of that? The thing is this, yeah. Um, always go back to your why. Mm -hmm. Why did I start in the first place? And the other thing too is to ensure that your goals are measurable and that they are attainable. Sometimes in January we start, we start off with lofty goals. Oh my God, I wanna lose 40 pounds. 
and I have not exercised in five years. I don't remember, I'm not, I'm not particularly inclined. So the thing is to make the goals measurable, to make them attainable so we don't get frustrated. Most of us um, decide to walk away from these things, the things that we, you know, the, the resolutions, primarily because we, we're failing in our minds. Mm -hmm. So when it is that you have an accountability partner, when you have somebody who's prompting you, who's celebrating with you, who is reminding you to celebrate the two pounds that you lost, it might not be five, but it's two pounds less, right? Then it keeps you focused, it keeps you motivated, it keeps you inspired. An accountability partner, but mm -hmm. also you mentioned the help aspect of it. This entire pandemic has been, an, it has taken an emotional toll mm -hmm. on a lot of people, mm -hmm. but there is still some sort of resistance to seeing a therapist because a lot of people, um, they, they associate <laughs> therapy with being mad. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about getting that help and not being ashamed to get the help that you need. Well, it's, what I have discovered in my practice is um, a lot of persons are a whole lot more comfortable um, talking to someone because we now recognize that when we dialogue with somebody, as grandma would I say, take off some of the pressure, yeah? So the thing is this, it is to um, spend a little time um, just going through, you know, determining who you feel comfortable having this conversation with. Some of us have a church community, so we've built a you know, relationship with our pastors or whatnot. Start the conversation there. The pastors are usually um, connected to other professionals, right? So if it is that this is outside of the realm of the pastor, then you know they're um, ready and ripe to refer you to somebody else. Now, when it is that you have such a close relationship, most persons are comfortable under the guidance of this individual to go see somebody else. But I would suggest don't sit here battling this whole bit out by yourself. Um, with everything that's been happening, definitely it is important to get some intervention sometimes. Finally, just give us um, some affirmations Mm. that you would suggest that you know we can use in our everyday life mm. I'm enough mm. I'm enough as is right now I'm enough I can do it all right thank you so much mm -hmm. Kelly Diedrich life and relationship coach we never have enough time when we're talking to Kelly in your seat.